Rolls-Royce. Throughout the last century, this luxury vehicle has established itself as the pinnacle of fine engineering. Yes, it's been part of our carbon chugging past, but today, this world-renowned prestige brand is working on our nuclear future. Just look at what's up ahead. This is it. They're smaller than traditional fixed reactors that are built on site, and they're modular, meaning they're a standard design produced in a factory. The small modular reactor, perhaps coming soon to an electricity grid near you. It is designed to be architecturally beautiful. Doesn't look like a normal power station. That's intentional. There's no reason why we have to design a power plant that, that looks like a power plant. Alan Woods is Rolls-Royce Vice President of Strategy and Business. Rolls-Royce is doing an enormous amount across its whole product portfolio in R&D to decarbonise our products and produce the next generation of products which will fit in a net zero world. It's fascinating actually because most people are familiar with Rolls-Royce as the maker of the most prestigious cars and of jet engines, but this is a big focus for your future now? Um, yeah, SMR is a, is a big focus, but Rolls-Royce isn't new to nuclear. Um, we've been designing, manufacturing and even operating a, a small nuclear power plants for 60 years. And that's all on the defence side of our business for the UK Royal Navy. So we're not foreigners to nuclear. Rolls-Royce has a worldwide plan for SMRs that includes Australia. As we shut down coal-fired power stations like this one in Port Augusta, SMRs could quickly replace them on site. My understanding is you could actually deliver to that site an SMR, connect it into the transmission grid and virtually flick the switch. Yes, it is capable of fitting in with existing grid infrastructure that, and therefore replacing existing fossil fuel coal-fired power stations. And that's a real advantage because the grid costs can be expensive. So if you have a solution that can plug and play, you don't need to upgrade all of your grid to accommodate it and it can fit in, replace that fossil fuel generation with a clean generation asset that will run for 60 years. Internationally, a number of companies are designing small modular reactors. Hi, I'm Bill Gates, chairman and co-founder of TerraPower. Microsoft founder Bill Gates has invested in the billion dollar Natrium Reactor Project in the US. 15 years ago, I assembled a group of experts to explore the technologies necessary to solve the dual challenges of global energy poverty and climate change. It became clear that an essential tool to solving both is advanced nuclear power. Nuclear power is the only carbon-free energy source we have that can deliver large amounts of power day and night through every season, almost anywhere on Earth. And it's been proven to work on a large scale. There are people like Bill Gates who've written extensively on it. And if we believe what they say, we have a huge, huge battle ahead of us. From my understanding, even the International Energy Agency is very supportive of nuclear and it's actually called out countries that have said that they might not be replacing their existing nuclear or they had plans to develop new nuclear and, and have decided not to go ahead with them. And the IEA has actually called them out and said, no, we think that you should be focusing on developing nuclear. And I think, I think there is a growing recognition that we just don't have the the technical capabilities in the, the solar panels, the wind farms and the batteries to achieve the deep decarbonisation that is needed if we want to make a dent in climate change. Kevin Scarce's inquiry considered the merits of a nuclear industry for South Australia. How would you envisage small modular reactors being used in an Australian context? 
Well, the benefit uh, that they offer is they're smaller. The new versions don't go critical, so they have natural aspiration. Um, they can fit more easily into the grid circuit. Um, and hopefully um, they can be produced in a sort of mass way where the costs of it can be brought down to uh, a fraction of what a large scale nuclear reactor plant costs at the moment. When you think about an Australian submarine powered by nuclear energy parking at Port Adelaide or in Sydney Harbour, surely it's going to help people become a little bit more practical about the use of nuclear energy. Yeah, I think it certainly will, Chris, but let's put that in perspective. That's likely to be around 2035 to 2040. Uh, if we're going to solve our climate issue, we need to have a lot of action underway by then. Is a Royal Commission the way to do that? I think it is. It needs to be one of those technologies that we consider. We shouldn't be afraid to ask the question. We're not saying let's have nuclear. We're saying let's look at the technology and see if it meets our energy needs into the future. Why would anybody be counting out nuclear, given that we know it's very reliable and certainly is emissions free? Well, we don't necessarily think you should count out nuclear, but be very cautious about the cost. We are, nuclear is hugely expensive and complicated. Uh, there is n a long-standing community uh, anxiety about nuclear in this country. At the moment, we just see it has um, too many hurdles to be overcome. The latest opinion polls show more than half of Australians believe nuclear energy is at least worth consideration, but many remain fearful. It has done a lot of damage and that does not go away in one lifetime. It takes a hundred lifetimes to deal with that type of nuclear waste. And until you've dealt with or have the technology to deal with nuclear accidents, and nuclear waste, I don't think that we should be pursuing that type of technology into the future when you have the options of other mixes that don't have that type of risk. Much of the hope for net zero carbon emissions is built on speculation. The International Energy Agency says almost half the planned reductions by 2050 are based on tech that's still only in demonstration or prototype phase. The agency says even with heavy use of solar and wind, we'll still need nuclear power. If you're talking about installing SMRs in a country, for instance, like Australia, what would you tell people about uh, the safety provisions of such a plant and also what waste it would produce and how that would be dealt with. Our plant is designed to take advantage of passive features. It has a 72 hour walk away capability, so you could, in, in event of a complete loss of power, the plant can look after itself without any human intervention for 72 hours, and even then all it needs is a top of water. So we can talk about the safety features. The reality is it's incredibly safe. Um, from a waste perspective, yes, there's a lot of irrational commentary about the waste from SMRs as well. What I will say is regulation in the nuclear industry dictates that we have to demonstrate what we're going to do with all the waste products and how we're going to decommission the plant before we lay a spade in the ground. But there is a reality, which is you look at the waste from a nuclear plant, we don't plough it into the air, we don't throw it into the sea. It's all contained. It's safely stored in containers. You can walk around the containers and the 60-year waste produced from our power plant would fit in less than half an Olympic swimming pool in, in its containerized form. It's completely safe. It's well understood how we store it. Um, and that's reality here. So nuclear power is the safest and cleanest form of energy generation historically, and it continues to be so. The problem we've got is it's only 4% of global energy and that means that we've got a huge challenge we need to increase that amount and renewables because if we don't all the other industries are putting the waste into the atmosphere and they'll continue to do so and that's unsustainable
how significant would it be if Australia were to get rid of those legislative prohibitions? I think it would be tremendously significant for a few reasons. First, uh, as a lawyer or even as an ordinary citizen, I would expect laws that prohibit things to be doing so because they are unsafe or dangerous. And the facts and science behind nuclear energy simply don't stack up. But what these prohibitions do is that they reinforce or even create this fear of nuclear energy. So I think to overturn those prohibitions would be a huge um, signal to the Australian public that maybe we need to rethink our current thinking on, on nuclear. Do you think younger people will be more willing to embrace nuclear energy? The younger generation is being brought up in a world where climate change is front and centre. And when you look at the facts and the science and you look at the data and you compare all of the energy generation sources that we have, nuclear has such a good story to tell from a climate change perspective, but also enabling us to continue our current way of life and, and, and indeed improve it. <laughs>